What's up, Smart Homers? My name's Aaron. I think that one of the most imposing barriers to jumping into Home Assistant is actually the terminology that we're using. In this video, I'm going to try to simplify some of the basic parts of Home Assistant so that you can get a good grasp on this amazing open source smart home platform. Whether you're using Google Home, Amazon Alexa, Apple HomeKit, Samsung SmartThings, or Hubitat, you've learned a set of words to describe your setup, and it's not easy to learn a new one. So this one's for you. As you probably already know, my smart home platform of choice is Home Assistant for a ton of different reasons. When a device I have doesn't work, it almost always works with Home Assistant, either natively or with a custom solution. In fact, the reason why many people switch to Home Assistant is because they have a device that doesn't work with any of the other platforms. Contrary to popular belief, Home Assistant means that you don't have to be a computer programmer or computer scientist to get a device working with your smart home. Home Assistant has fully customizable dashboards to display what information you want, how you want it, and when you want it. Automations can be built and tested without writing a single line of code. And for those more complex automations, there are often blueprints available in the Home Assistant community. This being said, Home Assistant can still be as complex as you want it to be, just depending on how much time you're willing to put into it. I'm gonna go over dashboards, integrations and add-ons, devices and entities, automations, scripts and scenes, and hopefully give you a good idea of what it's all about. The first thing you see once you've installed Home Assistant and logged in is your dashboard. This is a page used to display information that's available in Home Assistant. The more devices and services that you add to Home Assistant, the more information is going to be available for display. Whenever devices or services are added, Home Assistant automatically adds their information to a default dashboard. But if you want, you can take control and display exactly what you want. Dashboards are composed of cards that display the information, and these cards can be added via the user interface or by editing YAML files. If you want to see more on how I've created some of my dashboards, go ahead and leave a comment letting me know. Speaking of YAML files, did you know that YAML used to stand for yet another markup language, but now it stands for YAML ain't a markup language? Neither did I. Even though Home Assistant is largely configurable via the user interface, you're still going to run into YAML and it's a good idea to understand it properly. This is where the sponsor of today's video can help. Skillshare offers a wide variety of classes for all different professions and skill sets. One of the classes that I went through to help me out with Home Assistant is a Learn YAML from Scratch class by Tarun Talan. It goes over the history of YAML, its basic syntax, different styles, writing comments, different data types, and much more. This well-delivered class gives me a little more confidence to get into the more complex side of Home Assistant, which trust me, you're gonna to want to, so I'd highly recommend it. There are also classes for Docker containers and even an ultimate guide to Raspberry Pi class. If you're a DIYer or a smart home enthusiast, Skillshare has a lot to offer. As part of the sponsorship, the first thousand people to click the link in the description are gonna get one free month of Skillshare membership. One month is plenty of time to take a few different courses and see if you like what Skillshare has to offer. Now, back to the video. Next, let's discuss integrations in Home Assistant. Integrations are additional software that can be installed within Home Assistant and allow it to connect to different platforms, bringing in devices and data. There are currently 1,985 built-in integrations in Home Assistant, all of which are supported by the Home Assistant community. Built-in integrations are the ones that are directly supported by Home Assistant, and they're often auto-discovered on your Wi-Fi network. There's also a Home Assistant community store, which can be installed as an integration in itself, and it gives you access to thousands of custom integrations as well. The community store is really a subject for a totally different video. When integrations are installed, the data from these integrations are represented in Home Assistant as devices and entities. We'll get into what those are in a little bit. Next, let's discuss add-ons. Sometimes integrations and add-ons are confused with each other, but we should keep them separate because they are pretty different. Depending on your installation type, you may or may not have the ability to install add-ons. These are apps that run alongside Home Assistant on whatever hardware your Home Assistant instance is running on, but they can be quickly and easily installed, configured, and run within Home Assistant. 
While integrations only connect Home Assistant with different apps, devices, and services, add-ons actually provide additional functionality. An example of an add-on would be a Z-Wave JS server, which runs alongside Home Assistant to act as a server for all of your Z-Wave devices. Those devices are then connected with Home Assistant using a Z-Wave JS integration. Other examples are file editors, which allow you to edit your Home Assistant configuration files right in Home Assistant. One of the more confusing bits in Home Assistant terminology is the difference between devices and entities. A device is actually a logical grouping of entities in Home Assistant and often represents a physical device that's been connected to Home Assistant via an integration. An entity is a software representation of a device's function, but in some cases, entities are added to Home Assistant without being grouped into any device. Entities aren't just for devices though, and are actually used to represent automations, scripts, and scenes as well. This difference is probably best described with an actual example. The Philips Hue motion sensor, for example, is a single device in Home Assistant. Inside the device, though, are temperature, illuminance, and occupancy sensors along with that motion detection sensor. Each of these four sensors are represented within the one device grouping in Home Assistant as entities. There are different types of entities like binary sensors, sensors, and more, and entities have different states. For example, a motion sensor might have an on state when motion is detected, and it might say off when a motion is no longer detected. States can also be numerical, like the number 70 if a sensor is reading a temperature of 70 degrees. Entities can also have attributes, which give you additional information about the entity and its state. We can then use these devices and entities that have been added to Home Assistant in automations, scripts, and scenes, which I'll cover next. Automations are a way of making certain actions happen automatically. Automations typically have a trigger, which is the prompt for those actions to happen, conditions, which are rules for if the actions should happen, and then the actions themselves. The triggers, conditions, and actions all may involve the devices and entities that have been added. The automations actions happen step by step, but you can actually have pauses or waits for a second trigger within those automations. An example of a simple automation would be as follows. A motion sensor device like the Philips Hue sensor has a motion sensor entity. When that entity turns on, meaning there's motion, it triggers an automation that turns the light on. The automation has a condition that it has to be after 8 p.m. so the light only comes on in the evening. Obviously automation can get way more complex than this but they can also be very simple and easy to set up. Scripts are similar to automations allowing you to run multiple actions in a row step by step. The main difference between scripts and automations is that scripts don't have triggers so they can't automatically run. They have to be called by something else. Scripts can be called by automations so this can be useful if you have a series of actions that you want to run in multiple automations. You create one script and then both automations can call that single script. That way, if one of those actions need to change, you're only changing one script instead of two automations. Within a script, delays can be added between steps if needed. You can also trigger scripts from your Home Assistant dashboard with some sort of card. An example of a script is my projector setup. I chose to use a script because there's two different ways that I want to trigger my projector setup to run. I want to use a dashboard button, but I also have a little smart button that my kids can press to run the setup. When you press my smart button, it triggers an automation to call the projector setup script. This script lowers my projector screen and it also turns on the projector and it selects HDMI as the input. Lastly, we have scenes. Scenes are a set of saved states of entities that can be used in Home Assistant automations or scripts. For example, you could set up two different scenes, one for morning, one for evening, that has specific brightnesses and light colors, and then you could run an automation that changes the scene based on the time of day. It may seem like an automation or a script can do what a scene can do, so there's no point of having scenes, but remember that those are for actions and scenes are for setting the state of entities. Automations and scripts are meant to happen sequentially and can be interrupted by different things like triggers not being met, but scenes are meant to happen all at once. An example that I use scenes for besides the morning and evening scenes is for my office ambient lighting. I have two scenes, 
blue and orange and by pressing keys on my keyboard it'll call those scenes in home assistant anyway that's pretty much it for this video i hope this video has helped you get a hold of the basic home assistant concepts and terminology and makes it a little bit easier for you to decide to use home assistant i'd like to go over some of these concepts in a little more detail in future videos the first one being home assistant dashboards so if you're interested let me know by subscribing and hitting the like button. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you.